Should governments allow safe injection sites for illegal drugs? Hi there. Thanks for joining us for episode 240 of Plain English. I'm Jeff. JR is the producer. And as always, you can find all the episode resources at plainenglish.com slash 240. Coming up today, the city of Philadelphia was poised to become the first in the United States to offer safe injection sites for people addicted to illegal drugs, but the plan was scrapped due to objections from neighbors. We'll talk about what safe injection sites are and whether they are a good idea or not. In the second half of the episode, I'll introduce you to the phrase grapple with, and we have a quote of the week. The video lesson for PLUS members is all about how to use the word since when describing cause and effect. Should governments allow supervised injection sites for individuals addicted to drugs like heroin? It's a question that the American city of Philadelphia is grappling with now. Safe injection sites are places where individuals can bring their own drugs, such as heroin and methamphetamine, and take them with clean needles under the supervision of trained medical personnel. It's a progressive treatment model that has been tried with success in Europe and Canada, but safe injection sites have long been presumed to be illegal in the United States. That's why we don't have any safe injection sites today, Since heroin, for example, is an illegal drug, no private companies or nonprofits can be complicit in its administration. Well, that changed recently when a judge ruled that a safe injection site would not violate federal laws against drug use. Following that ruling, a nonprofit organization called Safe House announced plans to open a safe injection site in Philadelphia. They had found a location, signed a lease with the landlord, and announced their plans to open. And that's when all hell broke loose with the community. People who lived nearby said that a safe injection site would bring all the city's drug addicts to their neighborhood, reducing safety on the neighborhood streets and putting their families in danger. The proposed site, they noted, also housed a school and a daycare. They don't want a long line of drug users waiting to inject themselves in the same building that their small kids go to school. Some of the objections were based in principle against safe injection locations, but most of the community members were more specifically worried about the potential negative effects on their streets. It's an example of a particularly strong tradition in American local politics, NIMBYism. NIMBY stands for Not in My Backyard. In many cases, local residents don't object to something in principle, they just don't want it too close to where they live. In this case, the backlash against Safe House caused the organization to delay its opening and caused the landlord to cancel the lease. So for now, Safe House doesn't have a location in Philadelphia. 
NIMBYism is a problem that any safe injection site will face, although it might be a good thing for the community overall. It has to go somewhere, and the people who live nearby will always have a say. But let's set aside the NIMBY objections and ask whether safe injection sites are a good idea overall. Opponents say that there is no safe way to take heroin, and that whether the drug is administered in a safe facility, or at home, or outside, the effect on your body is the same, which is to kill you slowly. Another argument against these sites is that they normalize drug use. They make it seem acceptable and give it the appearance of being safe. A single injection site would attract all of a city's drug users, creating a concentration of individuals who all use drugs in the same vicinity. It would be better, opponents say, to focus our attention on prevention, education. And addiction treatment. Proponents think differently. They say that safe injection centers save lives. Untold numbers of people are addicted to illegal drugs, and thousands of people die each year due to overdoses right here in the United States. If someone is going to take the drug. Proponents say it should be in a safe place, not outside or alone at home. It should be with clean equipment and with medical professionals available to intervene in the case of an overdose. Safe injection sites follow the principle of harm reduction. The behavior is taking place. So the resulting harm to the individual should be reduced as much as possible. There is a time and a place, proponents say, for prevention, education, and addiction treatment, and safe injection sites often do have related addiction services such as counseling. But we shouldn't ignore the people who are in the throes of an addiction and have not yet found their way to recovery. It is difficult to say for sure whether the sites work, but the evidence that does exist generally supports the idea that the sites save lives. About a hundred safe injection sites operate worldwide, mostly in Europe. Canada and Australia. Part of the problem is that it's difficult to collect reliable data on illegal behavior. However, studies of a government-run safe injection site in Toronto showed that overdose deaths in the area declined, that there was no evidence that drug use increased as a result of the facility. And that people who used the site were more likely to seek out treatment. One observer said that it sounds odd that you can give people a safe and clean place to inject, and afterward they seek out treatment. But that is what has happened in Toronto, a facility in Vancouver. Has administered millions of doses without a single overdose death, and studies in Barcelona showed that the number of stray syringes on the street fell dramatically after an injection site opened. I'm not in the public health field, but. I think we should be open to new treatment models, study them, and refine them if necessary. In the face of our country's opioid crisis, we should be trying a lot of new ideas 
and sticking with the ones that work. Quick reminder about our email list if you're not already on it. JR sends out a bunch of additional episode resources every Monday and Thursday morning, at least morning here in the U.S. The emails have a summary of the episode, links to articles about the main topic, and an explanation of one additional word or phrase that we used in the episode. So if you want to build your vocabulary further and read some more English articles about the topics we discuss, then I'd love for you to join our list by visiting plainenglish.com slash mail, plainenglish.com slash M-A-I-L. Today's expression is to grapple with. Like so many expressions, it has a literal meaning and a more metaphorical meaning. Literally, it means to physically fight or struggle to get something. The far more common meaning is the metaphorical one, which is to have difficulty understanding something or to have difficulty managing a problem. When you're grappling with an issue, you have a hard time deciding what you think about it or what you're going to do in response. Earlier in this lesson, you heard that the American city of Philadelphia is grappling with whether to allow a safe injection site for users of heroin and other illegal drugs. It's not an easy question to answer. Even if everyone agreed that it's a good idea, and they don't, but even if they did, they'd still have to find a place to put it and win support from the people who live nearby. It's not easy, and the city is grappling with whether and how to open a safe injection center. Event organizers are grappling with what to do in response to the coronavirus. The Tokyo Olympics will bring tens of thousands of visitors from around the world to one place in Asia this summer. Should the event go on? The Tokyo Marathon was canceled to all but the most elite runners. So all the people who had been training and planning to run the race were not allowed to participate. Only about 200 elite runners participated. Some baseball games in Japan are being played in empty stadiums. The games go on. The players play. The games are on TV but there are no fans in the seats. Now, Facebook canceled a big developer conference. Geneva, Switzerland canceled its famous auto show. The organizers of big events need to decide what to do. They are grappling with this decision. Should the event go on? Should it be modified? Can it be delayed? Can they do it online? Is coronavirus a real risk for a big event if it's not in Asia? Well, these are not easy questions. Big money is at stake. The organizers don't want to cancel events, but neither do they want to contribute to a global health crisis. They are grappling with these issues now, They are trying to gain an understanding of them and trying to formulate a response. They are grappling with some difficult questions these days. Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, is grappling with a tough issue right now, 
a proposed natural gas pipeline in the Canadian province of British Columbia passes through land controlled by First Nations, which is what Canada calls the indigenous people who lived in Canada before European settlers arrived. The pipeline is important to Canada's economy, and natural gas is a relatively clean energy source. But the First Nations say that the pipeline's construction would cause environmental harm. People protesting on behalf of the First Nations are blocking railway lines, causing economic disruption in Western Canada. The government is currently grappling with the issue. How do they respond to disruptive protests? Can they assuage the environmental concerns of the First Nations leaders? Should the pipeline be cancelled? Is there a viable alternative? How strictly should police act against protesters? These are all questions that Justin Trudeau is grappling with right now. The Canadian Prime Minister is someone who likes to play it safe and listen to both sides, but I think he's having trouble with this one. Schools and parents in Asia are grappling with school closures. So many school buildings are closed due to coronavirus, and many are experimenting with e-learning so kids don't fall too far behind. Schools are delivering lessons by email, and parents are turning to e-learning apps with video lessons to keep their kids engaged while they're not in the classroom. Meanwhile, parents have to stay home from work or find other childcare arrangements while their kids are home. Not only are schools grappling with how to deliver lessons, but parents are grappling with how to supervise their kids during the day. By the way, did you notice in the last sentence I used not only but? If you're a Plain English Plus member, you might recognize that as the topic of the video lesson from episode 237, the first lesson where JR makes a guest video appearance, incidentally. It's Monday, so it's time for the quote of the week. Here's one from the personal finance guru, Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey is a very, very popular author and radio host in the U.S. He's somewhat controversial in his approach to personal finance, but he does give some sound advice on a lot of topics, and this is one of his most famous quotes. Here it goes. Too many people buy things they don't need with money they don't have to impress people they don't like. Boy, that is true. Listen, everyone has their own approach to spending, saving, debt, things like that, and Dave Ramsey's approach won't be right for everyone, but this quote is definitely true. Too many people buy things they don't need with money they don't have to impress people they don't like. Thanks for joining us for this episode. Coming up on Thursday, a locust invasion is putting the food supply in East Africa at risk. Wait until you hear how many locusts there are and what they're doing. That's coming up on Thursday's episode of Plain English. We'll see you then. By the way, if you enjoyed this episode and would like to get even more out of Plain English, then I think you would benefit from Plain English Plus, our membership program. Members get access to video lessons, a library of 61 videos and growing, plus a fast version of the program, 
translations built right into the transcripts online, and much more. If you'd like to see a sample of what you get as a Plain English Plus member, then that's easy. Just visit plainenglish.com slash sample, and you'll see a full sample episode. plainenglish.com slash sample, S-A-M-P-L-E.